What is going on guys? My name is Lexus and welcome back to another episode fun filled with a bunch of drama of course because for some reason I can never find a good deal on the vehicle and if I do it's too good to be true. We bought ourselves a 2017 Audi R8 V10 Plus with a sheepy stage 1 twin turbo kit on it. This thing is a wild wild monster but it did come with a lot of issues and I'm talking thousands of dollars worth of issues that I was never told about and now we're stuck with them so uh, today we're going to go over everything that I was told about and what I wasn't told about how much is it gonna cost us and what does it mean for the car and uh, what kind of building plans I have for it and I cannot wait to give you guys another ride on this so you can hear it and how it sounds those twin turbos spooling up is the most insane sound I've ever heard on top of having a v10 that's straight piped all the way through so first things first guys let's take another look at the sexy beast so of course it is like I forgot the name of it it's a special silver color it costs like six hundred dollars more from factory and it is a v10 plus you have a bunch of carbon everywhere from the carbon ceramic brakes to of course the rear spoiler the uh, diffuser the blades on the sides everything is carbon carbon trim pieces uh by the engine bay as well you do have the straight pipe custom exhaust from sheepy there's a bunch of stuff that are going for i love this car man those turbos and those intercoolers look so sick especially when they're color matched in red i don't know if you can tell hopefully you can see them in there i did do a poll on instagram and i was told to leave the bumper on for now so i guess we'll leave it on and uh, see how it goes i don't mind it i think it looks good it's like a hidden little sleeper car and but uh, god there's no single bad angle on this vehicle at all especially with the avant-garde uh, wheels on it 21s i think and uh interior with that red stitched leather seats and alcantara uh roof and, and i know you guys heard me say it multiple times if you've seen the last video that this deal was just too good to be true and it's a fact because technically i would say i bought this car for about 10 to fifteen thousand dollars below book value for a stock v10 plus because i bought it for about uh, i think i actually got him down to 152 which the mileage and the price for a 2017 v10 plus is about there maybe you could get into 160s 150s sometimes 140s if you get really lucky and it's far away uh but it, again this one has a forty thousand dollar sheepy stage one kit on it so i got a bunch of stuff done and of course you have the wheels on it as well so there's a lot of upgrades that technically i didn't pay for and i was like man this deal it just sounds so good and i didn't reach out to him he reached out to me because i had the f-150 truck which unfortunately is gone he's enjoying it so let me get straight to the point when he reached out to me he said hey man got this twin turbo spotless pristine condition r8 uh, v10 twin turbo with a sheepy kit on it which i love sheepy alex soto is the man i've already been talking to him about upgrades uh but yeah man are you interested you know we'll do a little swap there and of course you can finance pay cash whatever you want for mine uh, obviously the price difference is there about a hundred thousand dollars i was like man that's so oh, that deal is just really good man it's kind of be hard to say no talk to my wife she's like well you always wanted one i know it's not the perfect timing for it but let's go ahead and do it because the deal is just really good and i was like all right fine man you won let's do this let's make it happen he sends me over video right so i sent him a walk around video of my truck of course because he's all the way in salt lake city utah which is two thousand miles which is like 30 day or 30 hour drive and obviously I can't do that so I, uh, I sent him a walk around video of my truck interior startup uh, under the hood everything then he sent me one of the R8 here is the issues that he showed me guys all right so here's a little walk around video um, I just had them clean it up so as you can see car super clean um, I don't think there's any dings or scratches that are noticeable at all i'll show you some of the flaws that has a couple little ones but overall it's like 9.9 .9. so right here there's like a little clear coat so i'm shipped off of the carbon the rest of the carbon's like super super clean probably a little door ding or something that happens when we nicked it um interior i'll, I'll walk around the rest of the outside but Here's the interior, it's super clean. The seats are in way good shape. And then it has the diamond stitch, obviously, and then the diamond stitch headli headliner, too. Um, no wear on the steering wheel or anything, it's all clean. Can I show you? All the way around, it's super nice. No stories there. Um, yeah, it is. The wheels are AG wheels, and then it's got basically brand new tires all the way around. I would say like 95% tread. Um, carbon wing, 
obviously plus wing that has a carbon rear diffuser on it. This is the only flaw that I would say on that side that's even major is where the exhaust is burnt in the bumper right there. That's the paint that's like split on it. I mean, you could obviously have it repainted, but it's probably gonna burn it again. I don't know what most guys do that have the center exit exhaust stuff to stop that, I don't know, but no, the car's super clean. Who in their right mind after seeing a video like that would say, bro, it's a, it's yeah, man, let's do it. Why wouldn't I do it? Dude, the deal is just, the, the deal is great, man. I mean, obviously small little defective cosmetic stuff that can be fixed, no problem at all. But I talked to the bank and I talked to my buddy that was doing the deal through through a dealership because they're technically taking the truck in as a trade so I can get some trade in value there or tax credit. I think and I totally agree with them. Let's do a pre-purchase inspection, which means we take the car to a dealership, Audi dealership or somewhere for them to check it out, make sure everything's good. There's no leaks under the car. So I told Alex at Formula, I was like, hey, man, you know what? You're absolutely right. Let's go ahead and get this thing scheduled to an Audi store in Salt Lake City. Let them look at it. And then last minute, I was like, man, you know what? It, it's a performance car. It has a turbo kit on it. It probably has some leaks on the turbos, maybe a vacuum leak, boost leak, who knows? Maybe somebody can hook up to the computer and look at it and inspect the whole car because, you know, cosmetics are cosmetics, but I want to make sure the powertrain itself is good. And most of the time you take a modified car to a dealership, they don't even want to touch it, let alone start looking at it or inspecting it. So my buddy said, hey, you know what? I got a performance shop that is in Salt Lake City. They do highly modified high-end vehicles man they'll know exactly what they're looking at take it there i was like all right that makes more sense absolutely i'll pay him you know the 100 200 whatever and we'll 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 get it looked at so i schedule it in two days later they look at it and they said hey man car spotless bro you got yourself a heck of a good car pulls really good for the power level paid them the money i was like bro let's do this let's make the deal happen so we did we uh we got the whole deal it was a nightmare i, I don't even want to go into it uh but the deal was just getting more and more I would say shady in the way as the longer it took the the requests he had the the things he was saying was kind of throwing us all off me and the bank and everybody else but at this point i was so far into the process that i was just done with it i just want to get the car send in my truck and be done so i got it like 10 30 at night get in the car drive it home park it super stoked so the next day i wake up i walk to my garage and i actually start looking over the car right so i'm like man let me just put some more eyes on it make sure that the the condition he said it was is the condition it actually is first thing i started noticing cosmetically right first thing you do is walk around i was like man dude these headlights got so much rock chips on i don't know if you can tell but it's literally just pelted with rock chips i mean like this headlight itself needs to be refurbished re uh, rebuffed or something i don't know if it, the camera's even picking it up it just looks bad that's like well crap man i mean so is the whole bumper like there's rock chips everywhere the grill's got so many spots where just rocks hit it and pelted it i mean not to mention look at those coolers right there they're all uh white they're not even black anymore just because of how many rocks went through the grill uh and then i noticed this right here the front lip is completely destroyed i don't know if it, you can tell but it's shredded on that one side there's nothing left so uh you know it's supposed to be a carbon fiber front lip for a v10 plus is not cheap luckily we are going to put a different one on so we'll be good wheels wheels look great tires look great everything looks good brakes look great i was like all right man so i remember seeing this he did show me that but then i was like well that's that's weird there's clear coat missing here too so i wish you pointed that out because obviously i don't know if somebody rubbed on it or sideswiped something uh back of the car looks decent and um yeah i got i see this here everybody does especially with the exhaust is they wrap this piece just to make it kind of uh the heat not rise up and then melt the, the uh, plastic piece i guess right there of the top of the uh hood itself or the or the trunk i don't know how to call it and then i was like well let's see can i repaint this bumper and the more i looked at it the more i realized that's not a uh paint peeling that's the bumper that completely split in half and look how easy it is to flex it here because it's been under so much heat that it's literally just a cracked bumper and it's getting further and further down as you can tell and then uh, i was like man this uh this just doesn't look good anymore man this bumper is uh kind of messed up but wait a minute isn't that supposed to be the other top part of the bumper that is completely melted through here 
you can literally see where the bumper has melted. And I'm pretty sure he knew about it. That's why they do this bracket here so that way they can actually uh, kind of hold this whole thing in place if that makes any sense. And then I noticed this as well. So since the exhaust got rerouted, you do lose the exhaust that's supposed to be here. So these are supposed to be, I guess, some kind of like a custom clip that they make for them. But this this, this right here is just so embarrassing when you're driving down the road, bro. Like, is am I driving a, a Volkswagen Jetta or a $160,000 R8 with the twin turbo kit? But that's something we got to fix. I guess the bracket is just bent and it won't stay in there. It keeps popping out. <laughs> you know, at this point, I was like, all right, man. All right, it's still cosmetic. Just, just chill out, Alex, you know. Stuff happens. Maybe he didn't know. It is what it is. You know, just relax. And I was like, well, let's get in the car, man. It's time to go to work, bro. Let's, let's drive this thing, right? So I get in the car. And, uh, you know, I remembered the light coming on for a license plate. And so I had the car pulled in into my garage. I'm going to start it up real quick. You got to hear this exhaust, though. Bro. Wait. It's so freaking sick. Anyway, so I get in my garage. I start the car and I'm like, hey, man, you know what? Let's go ahead and back it out of the garage. So I put it in reverse and close the door, obviously. Well, that's weird. So in the center of my screen, there's supposed to be a backup camera, which obviously is not there. And you know why that is? But you do have the rear parking sensors and the front parking sensors, but the rear backup camera doesn't work because the rear, uh, the camera itself, since it sits right above the exhaust, it's melted. It literally melted the wires, so it never worked. And uh, that's a problem because if you look right here, there's the backup camera, and there's the exhaust. <laughs> It's a, uh, it's a little too close for comfort. It's, it's, it's. There's a reason that's an issue, and obviously he knew about it. It's not like I got the car and they automatically melted, you know. So I was like, oh boy, okay, all right, stay cool, stay cool. Maybe, maybe it gets better from here. So I start driving it to work. I start driving it to work, and I don't know if you noticed it in my last video, uh, but the car, I was getting a little, a uh, little heated in the car. Well, it turns out. This car has no AC. Let, let me put it to you this way. If you pay for a PPI inspection, a pre-purchase inspection is supposed to catch issues, right? That's that's the whole point, to, to make sure that the list of issues, if there is any, is something you can negotiate with the seller to make sure he fixes them or comes down on the price so you fix them. How did you not catch any of those issues in your performance shop? Did you not take it down the road and see that the backup camera never kicked on? Did you not turn on the AC in the middle of spring, summer? You should be able to see that that stuff doesn't work. How do you not see the melted bumper, man? There's just so much stuff that went wrong that was like, dude, you gotta be kidding me, man. So now we got so many issues. We got cosmetics issues. We got the AC issue. We have the backup camera issue. Oh, it gets better, guys. Just wait, wait, wait right here. Let me, uh, let me pop this trunk or frunk or whatever you want to call it. Every Every sheepy stage one kit starting from stage one has the water to uh air a box i guess ice box whatever you want to call it that pretty much recirculates and goes to the intercoolers in the back to make sure that they stay cool and you get cold air into the motor to not overheat the motor well so i was like man this is sick dude i gotta look in here make sure you know do i gotta put some water in here coolant or whatever it is so i opened it when i picked up the car and uh, you see that water in there that's cool and all do you see this pump right there that's completely shattered and broken? That's not cool. That is, what? Because now your intercoolers are not being cooled off by anything. There's nothing there. You're running hot, hot water or no water at all. That's an issue. So we pulled up the uh, cost of that. That pump right there is about 90 to 100 bucks. It's like a bilge pump that you can get on Amazon, but it's still broken. And 100% the dude knew about it. He just never mentioned it. So <laughs> bro, this just gets better and better. I, I, I don't know how it gets screwed like this. I really don't. How do you not catch that if you're a performance shop and this is part of the turbo kit, right? You said you know what you're looking at. You should have opened that. There's no reason why you didn't look at that. At least, at least see that that water pump is completely shattered and broken. Not to mention small stuff like Oh, I don't know, the washer cap is missing as well. I mean, dude, what am I driving? Like, this is so embarrassing. Let's go down the, the road a little bit more and let me show you this. So by the way, when I talked about the rock chips, one thing I did not mention is the fact that this car was actually wrapped 
purple um, before I think he even picked it up he bought it when it was purple and it had bronze wheels these were powder coated black after he picked it up and he took the wrap off and as you can tell whoever took the wrap off did an incredibly bad job and I'm gonna guess and say that he was the one that did it but there is still some wrap left on the sides there is literally glue still on the uh, door jams right here from where they peeled it but they never washed any of this off i mean it literally just a streak running down this is wrapped in like a matte silver gray color i don't know why they did the door jams like that look at that it's already peeling here it's so embarrassing that this car is in this condition it go it just gets worse i want to show you look what it has here on the front bumper as well right here somebody did a really bad job not even taking these uh, grills out to be able to peel out the rest of the paint there and then you still got uh, glue left over this car is just like I don't understand man like how do you not expect somebody to pick it up and not find all these issues but you know what he was relying on was the as is paper because once you sign the as is it's your butt that's on the line you can't come back for anything it works both ways as well so if that truck blows up in the next week two weeks a month or a year it's not my problem man you bought it as is you should have done an inspection if you wanted one but i did an inspection and i still got completely screwed and it really 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 sucks and i'm pretty sure you're already bored of hearing this but there's another issue with this car for whatever reason the front left tire under any speeds has this really weird squeaking sound it's almost like it's almost like the brakes are applied even though i'm not applying brakes i'm just coasting on the highway if i'm doing five miles an hour you can hear the squeak and it's really really loud let me show you a little video real quick oh wait guys the list is not over yet there is still more issues with this car so another issue that happened on the second day of ownership uh, i was giving my brother-in-law a ride i was doing a few pulls i'll be honest i was doing a few pulls but i know better than to do them below third gear because obviously clutches in these cars cannot handle anything or gears for that transmission gears for that matter cannot handle anything below like a third gear pull because they're just brittle and they'll break and <laughs> i don't want that so i was giving him a ride it was his birthday doing a third gear to fourth gear pull doing about 45 miles an hour and of course climbing real quick and for whatever reason mid pull this car threw itself into neutral and it wasn't like a, hey i shifted out of gear no this was like bam it, it sounded like something inside the transmission exploded i was like oh my god man i just blew the transmission so i, I bet you i'm leaking fluid all over this road so i coasted to the closest uh, parking lot parked it turned it off i didn't even want to look under the car i didn't want to get out of the car because i was like i am so freaking screwed man we're talking 20 30 grand for a new transmission so i'm just sitting there finally I get out of the car look there's no fluids nothing is leaking out from under the car car is fine i was like all right i'm just gonna start it i started the car no check engine light nothing came on no transmission lights put it in drive and i've been driving it ever since but that issue freaked me out because i was like okay well if it happened mid pull because i think i was shifting the fourth gear then most likely what happened was the clutches couldn't hold the shift itself maybe they're getting wore out with 54,000 miles and it just threw itself in neutral instead of going to fourth gear but this would mean that i would have to do a new clutch pack which you know i wasn't planning to do just yet but the crazy thing is is before this whole scenario happened coasting down the road my check engine flashed i think like six or seven times it flashed then it went away then somebody pulled up next to us asked us to do a pull that's when i did the pull and it threw itself and the neutral is like oh this car is so screwed i got home and i hooked up just a regular little obd2 scanner uh code scanner that you can get like advanced auto parts for like 50 bucks and it was weird because it said there is no communication or the uh obd2 scanner is not able to connect or read codes from the ecu or the pcm whatever it's called and that threw me off because there should be no reason why you couldn't read codes i understand some companies lock themselves out so you're not able to read their files tuning files and stuff but when i talked to alex soto i was like hey bro what's the reason why i can't read anything on this car well i just had this situation happen I was like that's kind of weird it should, <laughs> this should never happen but hey i didn't tune the car and that's something i forgot to mention to you guys is this was alex soto's kit it is from him it's sheep stage one but it was sent to florida and some shop installed and they did the tuning so at this point when i found this out i was like man i gotta there's too much going on with this car too many people have had their hands on this thing 
we got to get it right. So I took it to my buddy Brandon, which you guys have seen before. He's helped me with the Charger and multiple other cars. He's master certified through uh, Audi to work on Audis, Lamborghinis. He can do it all. Porsches as well. His Audi OEM scanner also said it's unable to communicate with the ECU. It's, it's completely locked out. It, there is codes there. We can see them. We can't read them, which is super strange. But everything else in the car was unlocked. So we were able to read the AC and it said it was an AC pressure regulator, I think, a regulator switch or something, which unfortunately you cannot just buy on your own you have to buy a new ac compressor so a new compressor from audi found the mistake is like 1100 1500 and unfortunately from what we think so far is that you have to drop the engine in order to do that which unfortunately brandon is a buddy but he's got to get paid to do the work we're probably talking another thousand dollars now we're probably two grand into getting the ac fixed so i could at least drive it in the summer that doesn't include the rear backup camera that's got fried and melted wires which it's even throwing code for that that it's not working so we gotta, we gotta fix those issues then all the cosmetic things that are wrong with it there's just so much going on with this car so at this point i have to make a decision how soon are we going to build this car, right? How soon are we just going to go ahead and get this thing going and get it to 1,000 wheel horsepower, 1,300 wheel horsepower? So when I talked to Alex Soda at Sheepy, I cannot stop bringing this dude up because mad respect to him. His advice is we need to do, if we want to up the boost or up the power a little bit, the stock engine and transmission can hold up to about a thousand to twelve hundred wheel horsepower transmission not clutches transmission and engine because they've done on multiple different cars so he said you know what here's what we need to do first off we need to unlock the ccu we need to make sure the car's running right all oh, there's no whatever those codes are are not major codes or and damaging codes for the engine that can you know ruin it over time because a new actually a used engine is twenty five thousand dollars Secondly, since we're already doing that, which would be a DS1 tuner software, uh, might as well do a fuel system. So we can do a flex fuel kit, get you the E85, stock injectors, you don't have to do those, just bigger fuel pumps. You're a thousand wheel horsepower. Right now we're at 850 crank horsepower, so probably in the 700 wheel, you're getting 300 wheel horsepower on E85. Now, since we might have to do, well, we know we have to do the AC compressor, he said, bro, well, if you're going to be taking the motor out, why not do the clutches? I was like, oh, God, I've heard that saying before. I know what a clutch pack is, on the GTR at least. It can't be cheaper than a GTR to do it on the R8. A clutch pack is roughly $16,000. By the way, a fuel system and tuning is about seventeen dollars to do remote tuning and to get the fuel system so we can get it to 1,000 wheel. Now, it's $16,000 for a Datsun 10-plate clutch with a billet basket, which you really want to do a billet because uh, Brandon even seen those crack from stock uh, R8s or on stock R8s. So another 16,000. So now we're seeing like 33 grand plus playing Brandon for the compressor for the drop in the motor. We're talking $35,000 minimum. But, but if we do this, we are sitting at 1300 wheel horsepower in that bad boy right there. <laughs> what i've never had a car with 1300 wheel especially on this level mid-engine all-wheel drive it, the g-force on that in the 60 to 130 is going to be insane all right guys let's get this bad boy on the road real quick i want you to hear why i love this car so much now i'm sorry but i have to drive with the windows down because it's about 75 degrees out here and it's uh, it's getting hot Downshifts on its own, I'm not doing anything. It's such a smart car. Watch, listen to these downshifts and that crackle. Third gear pull. <laughs> I love this car. I, I, dude, this is, this is it, this is the one. So let's talk about what did I find out when I picked up the vehicle. So I had a mutual friend that turns out worked with that guy or been a good friend of his and actually drove this car months ago because the previous owner had it since like October. And he was like, hey man, did this car, is this the one that used to be purple? I was like, yes. He was like, oh cool man, I got to drive it actually. There might be some issues with the car that the previous owner told me about though because we were talking about this car. I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, well man, let me call you. So we started talking and he said, hey, um, he said this car set at his place for so long, he's been trying to sell it for a while. And the previous guy that got a PPI inspection done uh, ran into an issue because they actually did a compression test on this block 
and cylinder number five came back five or ten percent lower on the compression than uh than it's allowed the the threshold is so cylinder number five might be might be running low it might be dying on you man i was like dude dude stop man because th please there's i have so many issues with this car as it is how am i good what am i supposed to do if i have a bad motor forget fixing anything else the twenty-five thousand out out the trash just straight to trash right now just to get a used motor that with about 10 to fifteen thousand miles on it that dude that sucks that hurts where am i supposed to get that kind of money when i just spent 160 grand to buy this car so it's like bro i don't know that's just something he said who knows so now when i heard that news it, and this was about a week ago it, it's taken me a week to try to even come up with the uh the strength to make this video because i'm i'm slightly forget slightly i'm really disappointed in this whole situation and how this deal went down again i'm not gonna bash the guy i'm not gonna say his name but the problem is he also owns a dealership. If your own personal cars are in this condition, I, I don't even want to know what your dealership cars look like. I'm just going to say it because that's uh, that tells you something about a person that would sell a vehicle and not say or disclose a single thing like he just did. Now, you guys know me. I'm an easygoing guy. I try to avoid conflict at all costs. Obviously, when I found out these issues, I was okay, right? I didn't say a word. I, I didn't even message him. This was like two weeks after owning already. I was like, dude, I, I had signed it as is. What am I supposed to do? But then when the when the mutual friend told me about this issue with the motor, I slightly lost it. And I think anybody in my position would have done the same. Now, I didn't go off on the guy, start calling him names, but I sent him a message or two. And I said, hey, man, yes or no is there an issue with cylinder five compression on this block on this motor and his first response was, what are you talking about what no there's no system who told you that and i was like well a mutual friend and he said well, well i have two r8s it must have been the other one and i told him no because he specifically said it was the purple wrapped r8 which obviously was this car because you told me yourself is there an issue with the motor yes or no he said no i was like all right i'm going to do a compression test if you if you're lying to me man we're going to have problems secondly you didn't tell me about the backup camera not working you didn't tell me about the uh, melted bumper you said it was just cracked paint you didn't tell me about all the other issues like no ac well ac uh it's like 50 60 degrees i only drove it through winter i had no idea i had no ac I'm gonna call BS on that. Oh, the backup camera. Oh man, dude, yeah, everybody knows about that. That's a known issue. It's not known to me. Who, what do you mean known issue? That's not something you just don't disclose because you think I'm gonna know about it because maybe some R8s have melted wires in the backup camera. All right, it's, it's getting bad for this guy. I was like, right, what about the water tank that has a busted pump setting inside that obviously you knew about? Oh, oh my bad uh i didn't even i never even opened it never even checked this since i bought the car that, bro <laughs> you you have to understand where i'm coming from like this, i can't make this stuff up this is literally the conversation i have with the guy selling at a pristine condition one hundred sixty thousand dollar car with a twin turbo kit and i just gave you a pristine condition f-150 that literally has no issues it's got seven thousand miles with a thousand horsepower how like how do you sleep at night know when you do this to somebody like i legitimately don't understand people that just on purpose screw somebody over you can't tell me that he didn't know about these issues he didn't tell me even like the cosmetic stuff you gotta show it on video you gotta say something because i remember even on the crack bumper i asked him i was like hey man is it crack bumper or crack paint he was like no no no, no bumper is fine man you can find somebody that can repaint it i was like dude I don't believe a word out of your mouth, period. Ladies and gentlemen, my rant is officially over. Um, <laughs> hopefully you guys learned something from this video like I did. And that is, uh, you know what? At the end of the day, you have to get a pre-purchase inspection done. You might have to get two pre-purchase inspection done. Or in an instance like this, I should have just went and picked up the car myself and drove it back. I could have paid for the truck to get delivered there. But then I would have flown out there and drove it back. I don't care if it was 26 days. From now on, if I'm buying anything over 50,000, I'm gonna fly out there, inspect the car. I can fly back and still get it transported, but I'm not gonna trust somebody else's word because right now I'm gonna be at least two to three to $5,000 in just repairing the car 
that were supposed to be in good condition. Not to mention, we are gonna be doing the build. We are gonna be making it fast. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it dragged out, I'm sorry, but I had to go over everything, how this whole thing went down, why it's been a nightmare, but at the end of the day, I'm still blessed, I'm happy. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe, because you do not wanna miss everything that's gonna be happening with this car, and it's gonna be happening very quickly. So thank you guys so much for watching. Enjoy your lives, enjoy your cars, enjoy your friends. And be careful out there, man. Don't take people's word for it, especially if you don't know them because they have nothing to lose by screwing you over at. I'm just being completely honest. But I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.